Because you have just finished the uh, Magnificent Seven That's movie. That's true. With... Uh, and this is... Is this the, the back with Denzel Washington? That's right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Since Training Day, right? Yeah. First time. Uh, which is one of my favourite movies of all time. Oh, How is Denzel... Will he ever come on this show? <laughs> and has he softened Let at me all? tell you something. The little queen bit we just did is not going to get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't send him that clip when you're telling him, you know, that. Well, it was so good. Well, you know what? It was good. I'm not saying it was. Well, you know what, Ethan? If he's not into that, he can go and himself. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. I don't care. I don't care. But no, you know, but how, what, what is it like working with him? Because he was quite, like, tough, right? Or is he softened at all? Has Denzel softened at all? God, no. Really? Uh, oh, yeah, he's the best. You know, you talk about, there's a, you know that age-old expression here, never meet your heroes? Yeah. Because they'll disappoint. Well, Denzel's the opposite of that, you know? I mean, he really is. When I uh, was first really falling in love with acting and watching uh, Biko and St. Elsewhere even, um, and really when he did Glory, Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the greatest performances I'd ever seen. And so then, for me, when I was about 30 to get to work with him on training day, it was this awesome, you know, M Malcolm X, Hurricane, so many performances that were through the roof. And um, I don't think there's anybody else around that has managed to be a movie star and a great actor the way that he is. He's yeah, both. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. lots of great movie stars, Absolutely. lots of wonderful actors, but he is one of the few who is actually both. And so have you ever, have you ever met any of your idols, any of your heroes? I, I, I did. Uh, James O. Jones uh, is an idol of mine. Yeah. Funny story about that. I was in Rhode Island for the premiere of Me, Myself, and Irene, and we just happened to be staying at the same hotel, and the elevator's open, and out walked James O. Jones, and he came and sat in the seat right here, and I was like, oh, James Earl Jones. <laughs> so I grabbed the Wall Street Times because I wanted to look important. I went and sat next to him and I opened up the paper and I just looked at him and never said a word. And <laughs> after about five minutes, he walked off and just gave me this strange look. And as he, as he walked off, I closed the paper and I realized that I had been looking at the paper upside down. <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> He walked out and was like, oh, what an idiot. <laughs> but that stuff must happen to James Earl Jones all the time. Like, at least you didn't go, do the voice. <laughs> do the voice. That's all people must do. What, what about you? Have you, ever, have you ever met any of your idols? I have. I met Frank Sinatra a couple of times. Oh, my. That was cool. He... I, I was singing at his 75th birthday party, and I was a kid. I was sorry, in my I'm early... sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very different thing to just meeting, being booked to sing at his birthday party. Well, I hadn't, I hadn't planned on actually meeting him, so I, I went on stage, and there were, there were some of the greatest singers in, in the world were at this event. In fact, Ella Fitzgerald was sitting backstage, sitting oh, all by... Her, oh, no, no, she was sitting by herself, and she was kind of rocking back and forth, and I, I went up to her... And I said, Miss Fitzgerald, are you okay? She goes, oh, yes, it's just I'm terribly nervous. I'm thinking, you nervous, right? <laughs> so I sang my song, but I completely forgot the words because he was sitting right where you're sitting. And I felt so embarrassed about it that after the show, I saw him at the, in the hotel going to his elevator to go up to his room. And I ran after him with my then girlfriend, now wife, Jill. And I said, listen... Mr. S I saw him go in the elevator. I said, Jill, I got to go talk to him. She said, you better leave him alone because he, he wants to be alone. So I took Jill and I got into the elevator and it was Frank Sinatra and Barbara Sinatra and me and Jill and the elevator doors closed. And I said, Mr. Sinatra, I'm the kid that just sang for you. I forgot the words. I was really nervous, but I'm a lot better than what you just saw. And he listened to me for a second and then he turns to Jill as the doors were opening and he cradles her face in his hands and goes, you're beautiful. And kisses her, <laughs> kisses her right on the mouth and leaves. 